We as Christians, I'm praying, all of us, are used by God for this. There are people wandering, man. We are desiring God to use us to bring people back. Say, man, all of us, hey, we have all have a tendency to stray off course. But let's do all we can to allow God to get that person and bring them back. They're wandering from the truth. And if we don't, if God doesn't use us to get that person back on track, what's going to happen? Multitude of sin, death, incarceration, chaos. That's the heart of God. That is our heart. That needs to be our heart as we continue to grow with Christ. Be used by God to bring them back. Get them on point. Verse 11, back in Romans, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians 8, says this. When we take our freedom and our, our stumbling, our weaker brothers, or someone who's weak in that area, we're doing it unto that person for whom Christ died. For whom Christ died. He paid that price. Now, some of you in here are saying this right now. Dude, grow up. Like, I can have a drink and who cares about that person? They, that's the person that needs to grow up. I would submit to you, there's balance. You know, it's not like you're, well, I can't do this. But uh, what was that person going to think? And you know, there's some people that no matter what you do, and they're going to blame you too. They're going to blame you. Know, they're going to blame you for your problem. Well, you just stumbled me. You know, I, you, I can't believe you wore that. You just made me stumble by looking at you. Grow, grow up, and 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 take those those thoughts captive. So there's balance with this now. There's balance. But keep in mind that weaker brother, Jesus died for them, and his death was sacrificial and supernatural. So when we have that freedom, we need to sacrifice some of those freedoms at times and allow God's supernatural power to use us in that area. Do you understand that? It's for whom Christ died. In verse 12, it says when you do take that freedom and you just, no, nah, I don't care about that person, you sin against Christ. When you read Matthew 25, it's interesting. He's, that par when he's talking about separating the sheep from the goats, and he's saying, hey, enter into the kingdom right now. When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. This is Jesus talking. You know, when, when I was naked, you, you clothed me. And, and these guys are, what are you talking about, Jesus? I don't, what are you, I, I didn't see you hungry. And he said, no, you know what? Whatever you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you've done to me. Christ identifying with his people. So Jesus says right there, you, when you sin against these people, you're actually sinning against me. Verse 13 again. If food, or again, whatever you want to put in there, it doesn't matter. Whatever that freedom, that liberty that you have in Christ, whatever that gray area is, if food or whatever that is, makes my brother or sister, really, stumble, I will never again eat meat or drink beer or gamble or less, you know, I make my, make my brother stumble. Me, I'm going to, I have two illustrations and then we're going to wrap up. You heard me mention Gamble. In 2001, we went um, and we packed everything up in Florida and uh, we headed out to the XFL. And we actually had training camp in Las Vegas. And uh, they put us up, where was the, I forget the hotel. It was a hotel casino where we stayed during training camp. And you know, I'm one of those guys, I don't, I don't have a weak conscience when it comes to gambling. I could walk through that, you know, my heart was breaking for some of the, let's say, seasoned folks that had the, you know, the skinny cigarette with the long ashes hanging out, pulling like the, you know, the, the slot. I, my heart broke for that. For, but me personally, it wasn't a struggle for me. The only my only struggle was the smoke smell. I can't, you know, I, I don't, smoke for me is, kills me. But hey, man, I'd go to camp and it, no big deal. You know, it's not like I was walking through that slot going, oh no, like, don't look, because I'm going to be tempted to pull that slot. You know, it, I'm, that's not a weak conscience of mine. 
And then later in 04, with a team, the Carolina Cobras, we were on the road. And every road trip, all the guys would get together and you know, they'd be playing Tonk or they'd be playing some card game and, and everybody would put in 20, 50, 100, whatever it is. And you know, people would be gambling the, all the time. You know, because you're in the airport, you're just hanging out. I mean, you got past time somehow. So I was one of those guys that I would, I loved hanging out with all the guys and loving on them and hanging out. But I would just, you know, I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't put money in or anything. You know, we had diapers and all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't want to do that. But one time, our very last road trip, they were playing actually for, with Skittles. So you bought Skittles to play in this Tonk. It was like, I think it was Tonk. It was one of the games, but it was winner takes all. And um, so I said, ah, what, what, you know, why not? I don't know, no big deal for me. And so I bought 20 Skittles with 20 bucks. And that was the entry fee. And so we started the game, you know, in the airport before we went. And then, you know, and then after we picked it up in our hotel room and, and uh, wouldn't you know it, dude that never plays at all. Now these guys played all the time. You know the end of the story. Homie took all the Skittles, you know, and brought home, you know, I don't know what it is, a couple hundred bucks, you know, it wasn't like I, you know, put 20 bucks in, it's not like I can't pay my mortgage or whatever the case is, but probably not good stewardship, but anything. <laughs> For me, you know, and, and, that, and the term I have is, oh, the Christian gambler now is just, Taking all our money, man. I can't, you know. So the rest of the seat, you know, the rest of the time, I was a Christian gambler. <laughs> I have a close, I don't even know how to say it, family member. His conscience is different. He struggled in that area before. I've seen possibility of family craziness go on as a result. Destruction. If I'm ever with him and the possibility arises for anything with gambling at all, not one time would I ever even suggest it or anything. Why? If food or whatever gray area it is, makes my brother or sister stumble, I will never again eat meat. Close, go into Philippians 2 and 4. Philippians 2 and 4. Philippians 2 and 4. This is the premise of it, man. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let me say that one more time. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let love lead your liberty. As you and I grow more and more with Christ as you walk with Him daily, you will, it's a natural thing, you will become more and more other-centered. You know, if, if, as you study even the book of Philippians chapter 2, it talks about that the creator of the universe humbled Himself even to the point of death of the cross. Jesus... God, God's very nature is other-centered. It's sacrificial. As you hang out with Him more and more and more, you will naturally become more and more other-centered. And you will let that love of Christ lead how you're going to you know, act in those Christian liberties. Our challenge, my challenge, I have areas right now that I have freedoms in that I'm not even aware that I'm stumbling someone else. I really need to pray about that and mature and grow as a Christian and say, hey, if I'm leading someone astray or if I'm making it difficult for someone to grow in their walk with Christ, I am not acting in love. And I need to challenge myself personally and not just look at my own interests.
sometimes it's going to be sacrificial.